gentlemen, Ella Tubman. This is the first video in the series where we're speaking about what Odin really is. I've got a whole playlist uh, of what the gods and deities really represent, and I'm going to get through them all, but it's going to take a, a long, long time since there are so many. Most of the deities, I can do a video in less than 10 minutes and, and go over the attestations and theories, but the central gods, the central uh, characters in the myths are much more complicated, and it'll probably just take me two hours just to speak about Odin alone. But I figure I would start here with the simple definition and meaning of Odin's name, uh, and that will give you guys a head start so you don't have to, you know, wait for me to finish up these videos. You guys can actually do the research and come up with your own theories. Um, you just need to be kind of pointed in the right direction, and what Odin's name means is going to point you in the right direction. So. Odin's name is very, very simple. There's a universal agreement among the linguists and the scholars. It's a compound of the two Old Norse words, Odr and In. Odr in Old Norse is pretty complicated. It can mean frenzy, fury, mind, spirit, inspiration, ecstasy, sometimes even poetry. The word had uh, quite a broad meaning, actually. The second part of the word is just a suffix, in, meaning the or the one. So Odin's name simply means the frenzied one or the furious one or any of these uh, options here. So while we're at it, we can look at much older forms of this word too, uh, Proto-Germanic Wotans, uh, the uh, Germanic language that uh, all of us Germanic tribes were speaking before about the year 1 to 200 AD. Just be uh, aware that most of that language is reconstructed, and the meaning was pretty much the same thing as you can see here. We even have Indo-European versions of this word when all of us in Europe were speaking the same language going back six, seven, eight thousand years. And you can see here that it was an adjective here, uh, meaning, again, kind of similar the same thing. So incredibly ancient concept uh, that Odin's name has to do with going back five, six, seven thousand years or more and still understood to have this same meaning in the Viking Age too. Pretty clear actually what Odin represents even in Adam of Bremen's account of the temple at Uppsala, he writes that Odin is fury. Uh, so simple as that, there is really no debate about what Odin's name means and what he has represented over many, many thousands of years. The question is, what does all that actually mean, and how do we explain all of this in the Norse myths? There are different theories and different interpretations of the many myths involving Odin, and I will go into all of them, but in this video I'm just going to go quickly into what Odin is. So we can look at Odin in two ways the scientific and the spiritual. For the scientific, think of Odin as adrenaline, ecstasy, dopamine, fight or flight response, flow state, trance-like state, altered consciousness, things like that. Whenever you have high levels of adrenaline or dopamine or certain chemicals in the brain, say you are a, maybe in an intense fight for your life or dancing to some crazy nice music and you're just in a trance or listening to some beautiful music, sitting there in a concert or having sex or any kinds of things like that, you're not quite yourself, are you? Uh, there is some kind of feeling coming into your body and, and, and your mind and it's just taking over and you're not... 100% in control like you normally are, are you? This is what Odin is. Uh, yes, of course, our ancestors, they had no uh, knowledge of adrenaline or dopamine or chemical reactions in the brain that cause these types of feelings, but you can be damn sure that they were very aware of what these experiences were and what these feelings were, and that makes it even more powerful and spiritual than we know them as today. Just imagine if you had no scientific knowledge of adrenaline, but certain times you start feeling this intense, you know, feeling going through your body, like, what's this incredible feeling going through me? What's going on in my body? Imagine, you know, how spiritual that would feel. And this is, all of this is collective, of course, like all of our myths, it's all collective. We're not just looking at one person or one, you know, being at once. We're looking at everything, the whole world, the universe together. When we feel these intense feelings of adrenaline or ecstasy or whatever, we're rarely alone, are we? 
Uh, the others in the area are feeling the exact same thing usually, and uh, at a concert or you know, having sex or fighting with your people in battle, you're all feeling this in intense divine-like energy at the same time coming into your body. That's why in battle, for example, the warriors would shout out Odin's name in, in hopes that his spirit would come to their aid and possess them to uh, be victorious in the fight. So that is the more scientific approach to what Odin is. Um, for the people who lean more toward the atheist side, now about the spiritual. So, it is nothing unique to the Norse culture that they believed that gods could come in and have their spirit possess uh, very real humans, a human body for a certain period of time. All over the world, through certain rituals, humans had ways to call this spirit and possess them. Odin is exactly what that spiritual energy uh, was in the north of Europe, but they call this energy different things all around the world. Sometimes this energy is a priest uh, in Africa being possessed and they start convulsing and rolling around and foaming at the mouth and things like that. Sometimes this feeling is an oracle in ancient Greece dancing around like a maniac and giving her prophecies. Sometimes it's a vulva in the Viking Age doing the exact same thing but up on a platform with a staff and this is what we call Seidr. That also is why the honorable chief god Odin um, learned the shameful art of Seidr because it has to do with him, this feeling. Sometimes it's a king in, say, the Polynesian islands that were being stoic and when they get this spiritual energy and this, they just start reciting beautiful poetry and knowledge. Sometimes it's in the East with these gurus meditating and chanting mantras. Sometimes it's warriors in a crazy frenzy howling and fighting like animals. We call them berserkers in the North, but there are parallels all over the world. Um, some tribal people are still doing all of these things today. That through certain rituals, humans could be possessed by this divine energy that is believed to be a god. In the North, that energy is Odin. You can believe it or not, whatever you want, but we all believed something similar to this at one point in time, no matter where you come from in the world. So the main question that of course you're all asking now is how do we get to this state of mind? How do we come possessed by Odin, the frenzied one? Well, there are many ways to do this actually in the sources, and all of you have experienced this in small amounts in your life. Um, I'm sure, but uh, the two most common ways that we actually have historical records of around the world is of course with hallucinogenic substances, plants of all kinds. All over the world we have different plants that humans have used for this um, and different ways to ingest them. But also a second very popular one that we find all over the world are sacrifices. The sacrifice of animals has been practiced and by drinking the blood of this newly slaughtered animal. We have hundreds of stories around the world of humans getting to this state of mind um, being inspired by a god like this. Uh, we also did this in the Norse tradition. Uh, the Swedes especially in the Viking Age had a reputation for their sacrifices and drinking the blood. Uh, I don't condone either of these methods by the way. Uh, do not do any dangerous drugs unless you have an experienced guide or a medical professional. And don't ever harm an animal unless you kill it humanely and eat all the edible parts. And this is how a bluth was actually done in the Viking Age too. It wasn't some crazy, you know, satanic cult-like uh, ritual. It was, it was simply a slaughter of an animal and, and eating the meat and using every part of it. But the main reason I don't encourage these two methods that have been kind of the most common historical way to call upon Odin is because we have many, many ways to reach this state of mind that we call being uh, possessed by Odin. This is what Odin is in the myths. This is what the myths about Odin is about. Sometimes these myths document very, very real rituals that we can participate in. Um, sometimes the myths describe events such as birth or death. Sometimes they speak about spiritual journeys that we can take our soul on while living, you know, meditation, uh, singing, or dreaming. Sometimes the myths are about war and battle and being inspired by the spirit of Odin in that way. Sometimes, in very real chronicles and sagas, 
uh, Odin is said to be actual real living human being. And the theory about that is, one of the theories, there are many, but one of the theories is, and this is common around the world too, that a specific person, a specific very holy person could be possessed by a god not just for uh, a few moments like in some of these rituals but actually for long long periods of time uh, very large chunks of their life so this is a possible explanation of Odin being a real person that is an ancestor of kings all over the north of Europe for France uh, Germany, um, Scandinavia, England, all of these places. So all of these attestations, and I will go over all of them, but you can kind of see what I mean. There are many ways to reach this state of mind that we call being possessed by Odin or Odr, and uh, many theories about what each of these myths are. But you guys get the general idea. Believe whatever you want. Take the scientific approach if you want to, or take the spiritual approach. But this at least gives you a main idea of what Odin is so that you can develop your beliefs and practices and whichever way suits you. So a lot more videos coming on this very soon. This is just the first one. Hope you enjoyed. Vi ses nästa gång.